Welcome to the uh, Lunch and Learn series. series. Now, this is the second out of 14. Uh, welcome to Career Development and CTE. And this series is focused on the school counselor and career development coordinator audience. Appreciate you coming in this morning. Got a quick question before we get started. If we could, um, if you please let me know in the chat. If you are a school counselor or a CDC, that will help us this morning. Uh, Gage, of course, again, this the audience is intended for school counselors and CDCs. If you pull up your chat and let us know um, what role you play in the school system where you serve. And then if you are, um, then if you are in the room, if you're a CDC logging in and if you're in the room and sharing your room and watching this with a school counselor please put in that you're you know there's a school counselor with you too in the room and vice versa if you if you're letting me know that you're a school counselor and there's a cdc with you in the room um please let let me know that too excellent 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 Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Fabulous. We've got a variety of folks here. Thank you for humoring me. Um, I'm Amy Palacastro Schrader and with me this morning is a Dr. Elizabeth Standifer and we are the Office in Career Technical Education, Career Development and Work-Based Learning Consultants. This um, session is for an overview of CTE and career development. A lot to cover in an hour. Um, and we will be providing the PowerPoint to you and the recording after. Some quick housekeeping items related to this Lunch and Learn series um, from related to CT curriculum. Um, it's covering all CT curriculum program areas. This is an introduction uh, related to career development CTE. The live sessions will earn you 0.1 CEU. You'll get that information uh, after the um, session from our program. Um, administrate our program consultant and rather for professional development. There are two pieces to the live attendance. There's a check in and check out. I'm going to have those links um, put in the chat for you. And then when they come up shortly, and there's also a QR code that will, this time around that makes it a little bit easier. Your WebEx registration is also cross reference in the WebEx account does tell us how long somebody has been in the system watching this webinar and or if they were able to log in at all. So there's some cross reference going on there for attendance. All sessions are recorded and shared to school counselors and CDCs and they will be stored on the Moodle. Okay, so Q&A will happen live throughout the session in chat. So if you have questions, please go ahead and put them in the chat. Uh, Elizabeth and I and Dr. Keisha Bryant is here too, the school counseling consultant. We'll be watching the chat and helping each other out. <clears throat> um, if you want to ask some questions through a form that comes to us, uh, you can do that through this form link and this QR code. It will be provided at the end of every session. It allows you to think later on, could be a day, could be a couple of days, next month. There's a question related to some topic that was covered and you can just send that through. Uh, we are checking that every week or so and following up with people. We had some questions from the first kickoffs, uh, kickoff, kickoff session, so appreciate that. And here is your attendance check-in. Um, so the check-in link um, can be, if um, Elizabeth or Keisha, if you could um, put that in the chat or use the QR code, that would be great. It'll give you some time. Just take your phones up and take a picture of that QR code and uh, give you some time to fill that in. This is your check-in that lets us know you're here. It also does has five simple questions, your name, your email, your public school unit, and whether or not you are a CDC school counselor or another role that you can fill in there. Elizabeth, are you able to put that in the chat, that link? <clears throat> Tell you what I'll do. I will copy and I will get in there and do that just in case. 
Oops. <clears throat> Got it in there, Amy. You do? Okay. Thanks so much. I didn't see it. Yeah. Okay, so take a few moments very quick again to fill that in. <clears throat> Goal for today is going to overview uh, CTE, North Carolina Career and Technical Education. I may use the acronym throughout a CTE, and that stands for Career and Technical Education. Information about the CDC, the Career Development Coordinator, uh, the Career Development Continuum, which is a comprehensive program, and some work based learning. And then throughout, questions in the chat. And again, you can put the questions in that form as well. So for North Carolina CTE, we've got so many. Uh, career development coordinators and career tech ed professionals, colleagues in this meeting, you could all do this overview as well. Um, so, yeah, bear with me. Uh, so, CTE, career technical education, folks who might say, oh, you, you could hear, well, come, the funding comes from Perkins 5, and Perkins 5 legislation is a strengthening career and technical education for the 21st Century Act. All states get funding related to Perkins. Um, every state, just not North Carolina, in order to provide career technical education programs in comprehensive paths and programs of studies to students. The federal government shares and sends money to each state, and each state is incumbent and required to provide data and reporting back to the feds. I'll just say feds, the federal government, um, providing documentation, sharing what we are, what they are doing, what we in North Carolina are doing, uh, credentials, assessments. Um, special populations, everything related to our career and technical education programs and pathways. Uh, each district or public school unit in LAA gets funding from the state, and then they also have to report back to us at the state on how they are providing quality programs, path of studies, opportunities for students in the CTE and career development. <clears throat> so North Carolina gets funding from the feds and it trickles down to each state and this um, provides state funding. Perkins 5 creates unique opportunities for all students as we prepare them to be career and college ready. Every state gets funding and we're, um, from federal government, Perkins 5, to provide <clears throat> career and technical education for students. In North Carolina, if you want to hear or learn anything about North Carolina CTE, we have a public facing website, a DPI website. I, I have the PowerPoint, it's got the link here, and you'll get that. If you just Google NCDPI and Career Technical Education, this comes up. On this site, everything related to CTEs there, sample documents, reports, and further links and resources for you, for the teachers, for students, for parents, all above to learn about Career Tech Ed. <clears throat> the mission of CTE in North Carolina is on that site as well, and it's Overall, the mission is to empower all students to be successful citizens, workers, and leaders in a global economy. And because I'm, I'm kind of soft on CT, we make the difference. We pull it all together and empower our students uh, to go forth in the workforce. We align to the labor market needs of North Carolina and districts and provide comprehensive quality programs of study. In North Carolina CT, we've divided up to eight regions. Here are the regions in the map. Uh, the school counseling and support area, you may have similar regions. Uh, we have regional coordinators uh, who work with our CT directors in the districts to ensure and help them um, work with their programs of study, build and connect to the labor market, and our, we have career development coordinators <clears throat> who work with the, the art regional coordinators and directors as well. Here is a glimpse of what happened in the world of CTE the career technical education and our programs across the state from 2021 at a glance. A glimpse, it's a beautiful graphic and we do this yearly. Uh, so that is, this is a resource for school counselors and CDCs to use. 80, and I've got a circle over there to the left, that 87% of North was the graduation rate for the North Carolina 2021 cohort. 87% of students had the graduation rate. However, CTE students who concentrated and graduated, the graduation rate was 97% for our CTE concentrators. 
CT concentrators historically outpace um, the, the overall North Carolina graduation rate. I believe in 2018, we were up to 99%. Of course, 2021, we're getting out of COVID and our numbers are slightly lower, but 97% is pretty darn good. Um, another item to look at quickly over on this image is our map of North Carolina to the right. And in 2021, our cohort had 542,695 uh, participants. And a CT participant, <clears throat> I have another slide to explain what that is, um, but someone participating in at least one CT class, and we had 54,000 CT concentrators <clears throat> for the 2021 cohort. The last number I'll pull and show in circle in yellow there is credentials <laughs> earned by CT students. Our CT students, career and technical education students, earn business and industry credentials um, in the courses that they take, credentials of value recognized across the different careers um, in North Carolina. And in 2021, they earned 126,078, a much lower number than in 2018, which was just over 275,000. This is a big decrease because of COVID and looking, we are all looking forward to this new school year in the cohort, um, increasing with our credentials for students to help them as they go into their careers. <clears throat> Amy, you have a question in the chat. I'm sorry yes. to interrupt. Um, the folks would like to know when the data will be available for 21-22. It comes out the same time every year, is that correct? That's a great question. Um, I, I don't have an answer for that. I have had to defer to our section chief, uh, Nancy Cross. It varies. Um, okay. I'm hoping in the fall, but I'd have to, we'd have to um, follow up on that. Thank you, Amy. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So a CT participant is a student who completes not less than one course in a career tech ed program or program of study. Little interesting wording there, not less than one course. Basically, that is because they can enroll, but they've got to be able to pass the course and, and complete the course. So um, that's the key there. So just one course puts them as a CT participant. And we had a, a 542 in, in the cohort from last year. A concentrator is some a, part, a student <clears throat> who completes a second or third level course that builds upon skills acquired in a prerequisite. So. I'm going to show you the pathways and show exactly what that means. But basically, a pathway has a continuum of courses, and a concentrator is somebody who completes that um, that sequence. And typically, there's a second or third level course, uh, a prerequisite, a pr um, requirement, and the concentrator course could be two or three in a pathway. Most of our court our pathways in North Carolina, a concentrator is um, completing two courses in a pathway. So here we're going to look at the CT program areas and pathways um, and show you the North Carolina CT course management system, which is a public front facing system. This PowerPoint is going to be shared for you if um, you want to edit, replicate, duplicate, have at it in sharing with parents and students and school counselors and CDCs alike. Uh, program information is shared on the DPI site related to all things CTE, as I mentioned, and everything related to curriculum. There's a link to the course management system and information for uh, career technical student organizations and every program pathway of study. There are seven CT program areas in North Carolina. Here they are, and all the courses um, that North Carolina offers falls within them. We do know that every district doesn't offer every course, as mentioned. Um, the goal is to, to work towards having your program's path of study meet the labor market needs and the student needs. There might not be uh, a course or program in your area, but as a state, there are seven. So here is, let me go back, the link to the course management system. It's on the PowerPoint and we'll bring you up to a public facing site uh, showing you links to um, essential standards, our program's path of studies, NC careers, and what we love for one-stop shopping for school counselors and CDCs is information on um, courses. You can specifically type in a course name uh, on this course management system and gather some information about the course. 
here I've typed in, honestly, I just typed in counseling. I don't know the course code by, by heart. You may not know it either. As I typed in counseling, everything came up. It showed me a preference. Should I want counseling for mental health one or two? And I chose mental health one for the benefit of speaking and showing you pathways today. <clears throat> And I clicked on course information, or I could also click on course standards. So we're going to see information that comes for any course quick and easy as you're working with students and parents and your business partners to explain what are, what is the information in the course and requirements. For the counseling and mental health and all CT courses, you're going to see the course number, a title, description, any prerequisites, what type of proof of learning assessment um, will occur, Will it be performance based measure, presentation, a credential? What kind of CTES, sorry, CTSOs, career technical student organizations um, relate to that course to help build interest for that student? And again, credentials and work based learning. <clears throat> so for counseling and mental health, one, the description can help with working with students and you what exactly is going on in this course. So this course is designed to introduce students to counseling and mental health field through understanding how to create some healthy, respectful relationships across the lifespan. Emphasis is placed on understanding mental health, family, friend dynamics, effective communication, and interpersonal relationships. English language arts, social studies, and technology are reinforced. Just this can give you so much information about the course and working with the student. <clears throat> What curriculum is reinforced and exactly what are they going to learn in this course? So moving forward, I clicked on course standards and it tells me what standards and objectives are going to be covered in the course, how much time and weight is, is going to be um, dedicated to each standard and objective, revised blue taxonomy, what's the level of, of depth of that, and the approach to learning the objectives and reinforcing the objectives and applying them, any transferable employability skills as well. So here's a quick look at what happens when we went into the mental health, um, counseling and mental health one course, the standards and objectives are listed. I'm just gonna look at the item in one in green, that's the overall standard, first standard, and that is gonna be analyzing techniques for building and maintaining a healthy interpersonal intrapersonal relationship. The course weight for this one standard is, is 28, about, about a third of the course. And then we've got the RBT designation and what employability skills are reinforced and uh, visible from the student in this standard. Great information to have on hand when you're coaching a student, counseling a student, and talking about their next steps, what they're interested in, and careers. Here it is, easy, so it's not a puzzle anymore. I love the course management system. Just plug in the course title and you can click on course information and get all that you need to know about this, about the course. If I click on um, the guided pathways program area, it's another way to get a picture of what's, of the whole pathway and what's going on. So I clicked on, let me go back there, uh, pathways and programs link in the upper right hand corner and I'm opened up to a screen that has all of the CT pathways in North Carolina, uh, programs, path, programs, areas of studies and pathways. So the program is family and consumer science that I'm looking at here. And I can also click on the bottom of that page and scroll through. Overarching program, family, consumer science. And I wanna go a little bit deeper down and look into the pathway, counseling and mental health. You can take some time and look in these. Um, we're just looking at this one quickly today to show an overview of the graphic image for all of our CT pathways. <clears throat> Counseling and mental health, um, career pathway and clusters here. <clears throat> Over to the left for every pathway in North Carolina in green is a listing of middle school, middle grades, career exploration courses that can be offered to support this pathway. There's a great deal of career awareness and exploration going on in the middle grades level. And here are some courses that can support the pathway. In the top part of the graphic image of the pathway, there are four boxes. 
the, this area lists the courses that are required for the student to become a concentrator, <clears throat> plus an extra major at the end. The first box is the foundational prerequisite. If there is not a course listed in that box, then there's no foundational prerequisite. Nothing. The student does not need to take a foundational prerequisite in CTE. The prerequisite course is counseling and mental health for this counseling and mental health pathway. The second course is the concentrator course. This is always in orange, and this is the course that makes the student, upon completion, a concentrator in this pathway and cluster. So for this um, pathway, career and mental health, the student would is required to take counseling and mental health one and counseling and mental health two to be a concentrator. They want to take the prerequisite first before they take the concentrator course. They are now a concentrator in CTE. As you're working with them to coach and discuss careers and they're truly interested in what they've learned from this, these careers, I want to take the next step. <clears throat> they can take more courses and be considered a pathway major. It's our way of saying that they're going beyond. They can take advanced studies course, apprenticeship or, or internship related to this pathway and program of study. You could also return back to the main page and go back and look and see what other pathways are offered um, in CTE and in Family and Consumer Science. There are more courses they can take to round out and build their career readiness related to this pathway. And every pathway has the series of courses denoted at the bottom. I like to think that now it's the ground. The gray reminds me of the ground. We're going to add some supplemental course to a foundation here, supplemental employability skill courses that can add to this career research. Technical courses that add technically to foundation of information related to the pathway. In this one, the technical course is principles in family human science. It is a family um, consumer science course, and it technically supplements this pathway. Additionally, you're given in green a reminder that your district may have some career and college promise courses that supplement and add to the student's exploration of this pathway. This is something that's unique to each district and an articulation agreement with that uh, local community college system. Finally, on the very bottom, recommended uh, um, career and technical student organizations that support the pathway. And again, in this, this pathway, it's Family, Career, and Community Leaders of America, FCCLA. If your school has this, it would be a flag to you like, oh, I know I've heard about FCCLA. I know there's a CT teacher who's in a co-advisor, and the student is interested in counseling and mental health as a career, let me guide them and recommend them to get involved with FCCLA. As a school counselor, if you're not sure about the CTSOs, the career technical student organizations in the building, please connect with your department chair of CTE, your CDC in the building, and any teacher to figure out and see what your CTSOs are. So a reminder that in order for a student to become a concentrator in a CT pathway, they must take the concentrator course. That is the course in orange on every pathway. And prior to that, they should take the prerequisite courses. <clears throat> These two courses uh, are what's recommended as a preference before they can before they take an advanced studies course or an apprenticeship or an internship. It isn't always possible because of the need or the scheduling of your courses, or you're not offering courses. And we do always want to think about the preference of the student and what's best for the student um, in the courses that we provide for them. Ah, career development coordinator. So there's a lot of you in the room. You could do this. It's a quick overview, but this is really some information for our school counselors to understand uh, some things about licensure and background. The Career Development Coordinator License is an add-on license, add-on license number 747. Take a drink there. Add-on for somebody who could have a school counseling license, could have a cleared CTE educator license, or somebody coming from workforce with different varied background. 
Questions on becoming a CDC should go to your local human resources and your licensing department. If you are in the CDC Moodle or you know somebody who's in the CDC Moodle, I do have a folder there related to CDC licensure information. Again, um, that does point you back to your human resources and licensure department. DPI licensure information is on the DPI site. You just Google NCDPI and licensure and you'll get the contact page there as well. All right, CDC's responsibilities incorporate these four, four key institutes, um, organizations and guidelines. The North Carolina Standard Course of Study, National Career Development Guidelines, Guidelines, National Model for School Counseling Program, and Future Ready Students for the 21st Century. Everything that CDC does um, relates and points back to these four entities. The CDC um, for licensure is required to, to complete a course from the National Career Development Association. And that course is called the Facilitating Career Development course. And CDA requires anybody completing this course to review, learn, deep dive into these 12 competencies. Uh, school counselors will see that these competencies can relate to much of the work that that you do. And so here are the 12 competencies. <clears throat> right. Overall, CDC's support, coordinate, and ensure delivery of career development services. That's a broad statement. They don't necessarily um, have a requirement to deliver them, but they ensure delivery of. So there's a great deal of collaboration going on in the building and outside the building. Um, they promote academic and personal success of the student, always at the heart of the student and work collaboratively, collaboratively with administrators, student personnel, student services personnel, CT teachers, teachers of all academic areas for the benefit of the student. The CDC is month of employment comes out of CTE. So they're primarily responsible for supporting students in CT courses. However, activities and events and functions that the CDC sponsors and helps to coordinate many, many instances serve all students. And that is wonderful because we want more and more students to learn about our CTE, career technical education electives and expand their career development. They support students transition to post-secondary education and employment making linkages with business and industry, post-secondary two-year, four-year institutes, private, personal, um, private, public, community organizations, and parents. It's an all-encompassing job, as is a school counselor, and the focus for the career development coordinator is really to support career development. As mentioned in the previous slide, there we go, coordinate, ensure delivery of career development services to students, and promote academic and personal support. Sample career development activities are here. There's in-building partnerships, such as working on a business alliance, helping to collaborate that, bringing in represent, they are the representative on that business alliance, business community members coming in to help support the career development, career tech ed programs in the building to ensuring that students and teachers are getting the most current information. There's offsite tours they might attend. Um, school counselors can attend. I are often asked to attend as um, help with chaperoning and to help learn what is current in the industry. Please ask each other. Let's um, attend events together, participate together, and it's the greatest need and help for our students. CDCs were also P PLT with other teachers in the building um, and hopefully um, getting into the school counseling meetings as well. Another activity is, is setting up practice interviews. CDC overall, there's connects school to work connections and resources for the students with the teachers, school counselors, the school and the community, bringing in the labor market information, what is going on outside of the building, outside the walls of the school and in the career world, making that visible for students, teachers and school counselors. They are the contact for career trends and opportunities for student success and are the pulse of what is going on 
in the labor market around them. One way that a CDC does promote um, and work with a, a comprehensive career development program is, that they're building is to put it together in a continuum. We showed you the pathway of courses, CT courses, and that is almost a continuum. There's a, there could be a foundational prerequisite, then there's a prerequisite and the concentrator course, and then there's an option of going beyond for the advanced internships and apprenticeships and advanced studies. That's a continuum starting in the beginning um, at a lower level, learning about, about careers and going on to the world of work as an internship. Comprehensive program services um, for career development is evident by the continuum that they build. Having school counselors and career development coordinators build a continuum together can make it all that more powerful for the students, the teachers, the community. Here's a continuum that is an example. Um, each district or school can build their own, but, but we like to show an example of career awareness in the early stages of ninth grade. We know that this occurs in the middle grades as well. Learning about work and then continuing with exploration and 10th grade, more learning about work going on and learning through work, through work-based learning activities in 11th and 12th grade and getting ready for the world of work. As school counselors and CDCs together, you're already doing career awareness, exploration and career preparation for students, collaborating and trying to build a continuum, one comprehensive continuum together can only benefit the entire school body and students so you can see what you're all doing. Beyond some of the activities mentioned, uh, there could be not limited to, but include career assessments, CFNC, assessments on NC careers, resume writing, post-secondary applications, networking activities, re career research, and then of course, work-based learning. Much of what goes on in the career development continuum is around work-based learning as well. It's a part of the continuum, but it's a huge part of the continuum. And with that, I'm gonna pass this baton over to Dr. Stanifer. Amy, thank you so much. Amy, I did have a question for you from the chat. Would you like to answer it now? Sure. I will. Okay. I will I, is that from Shakima? Oh, no, I'm sorry. Let's see. Um, they wanted to know, the counselors wanted to know if, if there is access to the documents you showed from the essential standards, the course management system through a Moodle site, or are they um, needing to go through NCDPI to get to those websites? Sure. Great question. Um, those documents and links um, are available on the DPI Career Technical Education site. I believe they are under the curriculum tab, um, as well as the link for the course management system that I showed. So all of that is public facing for any citizen free from the DPI site. I also do have that link in the CDC Moodle and those, of course, um, are for CDCs to access easy internally, but anybody can access them through the DPI public facing site and CDPI career technical education. I believe they're under those links particular under the curriculum tab on the DPI site. Hopefully that helps. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Just wanted to say hello to everybody. It's great to be here and. For some folks out there in CDC land, you may think you're seeing double. I have recently moved in the past month over to DPI from apprenticeship, which we're going to talk about in just a moment. So if you're thinking, what is she doing here? I actually am working with Amy, um, who you can already tell is amazing and keeps me straight. So I'm going to talk a little bit about work-based learning and how it fits up under that work, um, that career development continuum that Amy just described to you. The work-based learning piece is what the students will be doing, and you as the professionals in the building, whether you're a school counselor or CDC, have the opportunity to work together to scaffold those experiences, to give them a really authentic experience, and for them to be able to really be out in the workforce and determine uh, what they may want to do post-secondary. So on the next slide, there is also, we have a lot of continuums, as you can see, um, there's also a work-based learning continuum and it aligns right there with that um, 
what Amy talked about in terms of uh, workforce development and, and that, career, that career piece. Students will be engaging in activities in fifth grade and, and even before that. Oftentimes, school counselors are working with kindergarten students. I remember when I was a school counselor in an elementary school, we did an activity with kindergartners. They brought pairs of shoes to school to represent a certain career. And we had boots, we had um, uh, the type of shoes that a nurse might wear, and we talked about what those careers were. But on up into the fifth grade, uh, they might start to do more awareness activities like opening up their CFNC account and taking some assessments. Um, and then continuing, as Amy said, um, on her continuum for career development, that they may continue to explore careers from uh, that eighth through ninth period on up into 10th grade, and then they might start doing some actual preparation for those careers. So the next slides are gonna kind of address that and, and really talk about what those pieces look like. So this um, slide, my portion is probably gonna be a little bit shorter. Um, and next time that I make a presentation, I'll make sure that I do a screen capture of the sites that I want you to see. But I've hyperlinked for you here, and it's also earlier in the chat for those that um, can scroll up and see earlier links what career, career awareness activity students might participate in at the different levels. This block that you see here that says career awareness comes from our work-based learning guide, which I'm also gonna make sure you have access to. But career awareness is just really um, doing that really great job of making sure that students are able to um, be out in their schools, understanding what opportunities are available to them. And that might include um, junior achievement, if you have that in your school. Um, oftentimes, that's a, a big thing that happens in middle and high schools, and they also offer oftentimes internship opportunities. Um, you might be thinking about job shadowing. If you are familiar with our middle school program, Students at Work, it was started many years ago by First Gentleman Eves who was um, in the in the spot of uh, being the governor's husband, and he had this project that eighth grade students would go out and actually job shadow in their communities, and it's really been a great deal for them. And Amy, I, we can't see the screen right now. Um, it oh, says you oh can gosh, I'm sorry, I did glitch on that. My apologies, I'll share that again. I was putting those links in the chat again for the new okay. for folks. Who I was them. trying to do it by memory as we were going down things. Um, <laughs> Thank I, you, Elizabeth. <laughs> my apologies. That's okay. I know a lot of um, districts do huge career cluster fairs or career fairs where you're actually kind of doing a, a thing for middle school students to be thinking about what they might take in high school and how that aligns with the jobs that they might think about post secondary guest speakers, field trips. And for things like site tours, taking students out into industry. So we're going to have a link for you to be able to go and see um, some of the different things that the state says about career awareness. And one of the sites that I directed you to is off of the NC Career site. If you've not been a part of that site, that is a culmination of all of our state agencies, the the leads for state agencies, really thinking about what career uh, what awareness looks like in our state. And so you can go there and see some of the examples and you'll be able to click on information about students at work, for example, and the, the snip that I took there at the bottom comes from the students at work link on that website that you'll be able to get to. Okay, so the next piece after career awareness, we like to think about kids exploring. Now, I already had job shadow, so you might think, well, why did I repeat it? If you don't know, National Job Shadow Day is synonymous with Groundhog's Day. In many districts, this becomes exploration because the student is not only just going out to a company or a business for a day or a day and a half or whatever amount of time the school district allots for that activity. They're also doing heavy research on an occupation and tying those two things together. Um, so that's a really great opportunity for juniors that it's happening often in their English classes. And a lot of times school counselors and CDCs help to engage students with the work-based learning piece of that, which is actually going out to the company. Um, of course, course related field trips and site tours that really are a little bit of a deeper dive down into what is really happening out in uh, the real world. So if you have a pre apprenticeship program, or if you have an apprenticeship program, you may be um, 
promoting tours to parents and students to go see and experience what really happens in a job that a student might actually end up applying for. And then competitions, uh, career technical student organizations, and the link to this site would take you to the career technical student organizations that we recognize in the United States. And we participate in all of them except one. Um, and I did not include that one down in my graphic on the bottom. Uh, so in North Carolina, we do support them. And you, again, as Amy said, go back to your school district and find out where your students are participating. But if you don't know what happens in those career technical student organizations, I would challenge you to talk to your students about what they're doing. We have officers in districts that serve our state. We also um, have them doing public speaking, um, doing technical competitions, bricklaying, for example. Um, I mean, it's just amazing what these kids do. And then what I would suggest is really encouraging those students as you work with them as school counselors to make sure that they're documenting that on their plans, on their career development plans, or in, you know, preparing for the Common App if they're going to be using that to apply to colleges. So just making sure that they're capturing all this great stuff that they're doing. I know I looked at some um, entrance information from Carolina the other day, UNC, and one person was talking about she was admitted because of some of the career technical student organization um, activities she had participated in. Let's don't forget about those science fairs and those students that are doing that deep dive. Um, working with other professionals in a field sometimes to create a, a great project robotics of course we have lots of competitions with those around the state that students can participate in and jrotc is another really great way to explore a career there are also career simulations in some areas we have buses and big vans where students can come in for a day and see what it would be like to be a truck driver and those types of things um, those can always be connected again to classroom experiences and then mentoring is another great uh, career exploration tool that can be used in a school. All right, Amy, next one. And then finally, career preparation. Um, this is gonna be connected to a site called Career Launch, which is also off of the NC Career site. Career Launch was a collective idea about what does it really mean to get a student out into the workforce? And all of these preparation activities below do those things. In CTE, we have the entrepreneurial uh, I, that's such a hard word to say. Entrepreneurial experience as a course. We have cooperative education, internship, pre apprenticeship, apprenticeship, and then within the ag cluster, we've got supervised agricultural experiences. Some of these are paid, um, some of these are unpaid. And the last slide that I'm going to show you is going to really go through that for you or next to last slide, I'm, I've got two more. So this is an example of Animal Science One. Amy has showed you in our career cluster guide how this um, continuum of courses look, and I can understand and, and respect that as a school counselor, if, especially if you're new, or even as a new CDC, it could get a little bit confusing about what our documents say and exactly what a student can participate in. And Amy said it so well this morning when she and I were kind of waiting for the program to start. What we always want to do is what's best for kids. And what we know is that it takes the CDC and the career develop the career development coordinator and the school counselor working together to create that experience with that student. So be thinking as you look at students for your plans or you're looking at their pathway, what is the best thing for them at the time that they're in their pathway? What opportunities do they have? And if you have questions about what would be acceptable for them to participate in, of course, contact us. But here again, in Animal Science One, the way that our, um, our manual is written, it has the career pathway major at the end. And you might think to yourself, well, they have to complete all of this to get to some of these career major experiences. But then what you'll see here in gray at the bottom is a copy of our essential standards for Animal Science One. And you can see that these courses here are listed as yes, that a student could possibly participate in these for that course. So let's look at the last slide just to kind of shore up all of those lists that you saw there of courses and the yeses and the noes and what does that really mean? Again, what it means is keeping in mind what is, in, what is important for the student to do and what is in their best interest. CTE 
does list work-based learning opportunities as courses for credit. And so that being said, we have to be very careful when we're giving course credit that we're applying it evenly across the whole student body and that the expectations are the same for the students that are participating. So internship, if you look at that as a course code, it will start with WB. And the reason that it says XX after the WB is that every pathway in CTE has its own internship course code number. For ag, for example, it will be WB01. You would be able to go back to that uh, central standards document or the uh, CMS that Amy showed you uh, to find the exact course code for the pathway the student is in. But one of the questions I've already gotten a lot, even though this is only starting my third week working with the team is, do they have to have completed the pathway or do they have to be a concentrator to be able to do the internship? And according to our documentation, um, there is not a requirement that they have to have. However, some counties, that is a preference in that county. In some counties, it is a policy and in some counties, it is recommended that that is what the student do. So again, think about the student and think about what's best for them. Think about your program and think about how to best apply this to for students. Because what we know is that we've been told many times that public education is not preparing students for work. And a long, for a long time, industry didn't let our students in the door. Now they're wanting them in the door. They're recruiting them to come in the door. And with internship, we're not having to go seek the placements like we used to. 20 years ago, oftentimes the principal may come in and say, I need you to find an internship for this person, and it was nearly impossible. That, that has changed some out in the field. Maybe not everywhere, but in some places. The next question I get about internship is when or how should this be repeated? Can it be repeated? Um, so let's talk about that for just a second. If the experience is in a different pathway within the cluster, for example, in agriculture, a student might do a work-based learning experience in agriculture, like through agriculture one, but then they might go into um, biomedical technology or they might look at something in ag mechanics. And so the repeat of an internship may be completely different experiences. And in that case, as long as it's being documented and you're keeping track of what the student's doing, then, then that would be acceptable. Um, or, you know, maybe they do another internship in a completely different course code. Um, also, if the student is learning um, new skills within that same internship, as long as you're working together and documenting um, that the student will be doing pretty much the same pathway, but new skills in that pathway, then that might be an appropriate time. Um, another one that gets a little tricky for people is co-op. It does have a co-requisite. It should occur concurrently with a level one course or the semester af after the level one course in marketing. But again, this one, uh, much like what we're getting ready to talk about with pre-apprenticeship and apprenticeship, um, there must be documented skills for that one. Pre-apprenticeship is not a requirement for an apprenticeship. It is a recruiting and screening tool that companies often use to make sure that they get the right fit, but students can also get credit for this. Just be aware that there is only one code for apprenticeship. Um, so if they're in a pre-apprenticeship, that would be a good code to use, um, but then it would have to be repeated again if they do go into the apprenticeship. Now we do say in our some of our documentation that two credits are required. And it says the same thing for apprenticeship, but I have some folks here, I, I looked at the list of attendees who work in districts where you know that really industry kind of drives and runs the pre-apprenticeship and apprenticeship opportunities. They are the ones that are doing the recruiting. A lot of times they prefer that a student has had CTE background, but there are often times that a student goes straight into a pre-apprenticeship or apprenticeship and doesn't have experience. Um, that's why they use the pre-apprenticeship very often to be able to give them a little front loading of some information and then see if they are able to acclimate to it and move into the apprenticeship. Elizabeth, there are, there are two questions in the chat. Uh, the first one is, do you have to have a pathway at your school for a student to do an internship in that pathway? If the, um, if the, Apprenticeship is registered in your community, and, and there is a registered apprenticeship on file with Apprenticeship NC. 
No, the student, if they are hired by that company, will be registered with apprenticeship and see at the community college system as an apprentice. What will how happen? About, how about an internship? Do you have to have a pathway at your school for students to do an internship in that pathway? I would say, Amy, and you help me out on this one, if you will, but you have to be able to have that um, course code in your library, in your um, Ellie, in your public school unit. So you're going to be using the course codes that are available to you. Would that sound correct to you, Amy or Linda? Yes. If you're on? Yeah. Yes. Yes. You, you need that course code. Um, so if you don't, if you don't have the pathway, I don't, I don't know that end of being able to pull something like that down where that credit would come from. But I would hope that it would fit into something that's happening. Then we have another question. Are both credits, two credits automatically awarded based on the course codes in the master course code list? Maybe I read the screen law wrong, same person, Jean. Um, it's two credits, the maximum that a student can obtain completing an apprenticeship. So she's re rewording the question, I believe. Is, is two credits the maximum that students can obtain completing an apprenticeship? Now, I've not seen, I've not read anything that says that, but um, I cannot imagine that a student would need to get more than two credits to do that. Because at the same time, they're doing their related instruction at the community college or in the school district, which is also going to be earning them credit. So I wouldn't imagine that a student would need to, to do that. Amy, what's your take on that? I'm going to agree, you know, apprenticeship course is 2 credits. Um, for this, every student's unique. I'm not. I'm thinking it sounds like a unique situation, Jean. Um, if. If the school and the team working with the students might think that they would take. A, another course, um, I, I would recommend. Uh, an, an advanced yeah. studies after. To mm -hmm. doing the apprenticeship or, or yeah. prior to. Uh, I just yeah. imagine two credits, that. two credits for course. Yes, each yeah. course is two credits. Um, but I, I'm kind of reading into it thinking, did you want to give them another apprenticeship after they do the first one? But um, the course code for apprenticeship is only worth two course credits. So yeah, hopefully that helps. And I, I would think there'll be very few students who would be in an apprenticeship longer than one year. Um, and I also would say that they're going to be on target for graduation and not would not need course credit for that. Of course, we want to validate their experience and give them credit when they are an apprentice and they are out there in the field. But at some point, you're going to run into a kid that may be 16 and become an apprentice. I would say that they would not need course credit for four semesters, two in their junior and two in their senior year for that course. Um, yeah, so the question, she's got another question. My apologies for interrupting. What does the two credits on the screen mean then? Um, it's just listing well, that the course two credits, I think. So the, it, at the top, it says the, the prereq notes. So in our, um, in our standards, it says that they have to have two credits as a prerequisite to take a pre-apprenticeship or to take an apprenticeship course. However, what is actually happening in the field is that students from all walks of life are being recruited into apprenticeship and pre-apprenticeship. Oftentimes those recruitment opportunities are held through the community college, through uh, nonprofits in the area, and the students are able to go through that recruitment without the school. And in some cases, the school has very little or limited access to the activities that are occurring to recruit those students into pre-apprenticeship and apprenticeship. And so as long as a student is 16 and they are selected and hired by the company and and put into an apprenticeship program in the state of North Carolina, they are a bona fide apprentice or pre-apprentice. And they're going to get a certificate from the state of North Carolina that says they were a pre-apprentice or an apprentice. Um, what our standards say that are is a little bit prohibitive to us is that we're saying for us to, to give them credit through a course for that, um, they would have to have already completed two credits in a CT pathway to be able to participate. And she says, thank you, Elizabeth. That's what she wanted to know. Appreciate yeah. that. Yeah. And so, um, so I think we've got a little bit of work to do on how we put information out about that. Um, so that's why I put it in red because while there's no prereq required for the actual registration of an apprentice in this state, we do have um, some documentation that suggests two credits prior to 
um, using it as a course. Um, then entrepreneurial experience and advanced studies do require the two credits in a pathway to be able to participate in those for lots of good reasons. Um, because we want to make sure that they do have a foundation as they move through the coursework in those courses. What you have above in that link, work-based learning as a course, will take you to the work-based learning manual that I mentioned earlier that was created last year so that you can read more about the things that I've talked about today and a lot of things that the things, uh, excuse me, a lot of the things that Amy has talked about today. And I apologize, I've only left us with 25, with five minutes for questions. Um, and there's a picture of that work-based learning guide there. So, if there are questions um, for us to follow up on and you think about them, uh, this is the standard follow up QR code and the link. I wonder, um, Elizabeth, if you could capture that. I, I'm uh, clearly sure. not um, good about <laughs> capturing things and messing uh, up the sure screen. Will. So, sure and this is again the standard for all of the CTE Lunch and Learn series um, QR code goes into one document that we refer to back and sort and send to the appropriate folks. The form that pops up does ask you to select what consultant um, or Dr. Bryant for school counselors uh, you would like a follow-up question to. Thanks, thanks so much, Elizabeth. So that is that is the link for Q&A. And then there's one other link coming as we're going to watch the chat to see if there's any questions coming in. This is your attendance checkout. So I will type in checkout form in the um, chat. And Elizabeth, if you could put the code in there for, for us to do the checkout. Okay. And of course, use the QR code as well. Someone asked also if you could put the sign in form back in. Was a sign in form um, at the beginning. Okay. Let me send that. Okay. Did everybody get the one for the form for Q and A? Can you see it, mm -hmm. Amy? Yes, I do. I do see okay. it. I, I put I posted it a second ago and it did not launch. So <laughs> sorry about that, guys. It, it's showing it went on at eleven twenty six. It okay. went out there. Okay, good. I could not see it myself and I'm going up there to the sign in now as we speak. I'll bring that back to you. On our end and everyone knows that these chat boxes can be very small. If you have any questions that you'd like to put in the chat right now, as we are wrapping up, we are at 1128. So we have two more minutes before we stop the recording and the session. <clears throat> Within a week, the PowerPoint should be available. Last time it was available within two days, um, sent to the to the CDC Moodle. In a week, the recording should be available. Um, there we go. Thanks so much, Elizabeth. You're welcome. So, I, Amy, is it okay if I just clarify again? Because I was just going back through the chat, looking at the confusion. The chart that I was showing you was talking about our requirements for a, per a person to be able to participate in high school in those courses. Um, not how much credit they would earn from doing the, actually completing the course. Does that clarify it for everyone? Okay. Sorry for the confusion on that. I'll make sure I tweak that so it's not a, unclear. Okay, so we, we're down to one minute. I'm going to keep this up, this checkout form up there. <clears throat> Some great questions today. Hopefully this has helped um, for school counselors in the room to learn a little bit about CTE as a quick overview. This could, it could take a couple of, a couple of one hour sessions to go in detail and really get granular with all that happens and occurs and opportunities in North Carolina career tech ed. Um, the rich programs of studies, rich courses connected to labor and industry and opportunities for our students. 
please reach out with any questions and CDCs. Hopefully this was a good session for you as well, for the new CDCs, um, what is going on and, and maybe some review for our veterans. The links certainly are great resources. Everything that we want to know about North Carolina Career and Technical Education is on the NCDPI site. Google NCDPI and Career Technical Education and you will get that. <clears throat> Mark those sites as your favorites. In the course management system, of course, um, the site that I pulled up to show you are career pathways and courses. One-stop shopping to find everything related to career tech ed, programs of studies, courses, and a link to NC Careers. Great resources, and we, we value your input and ask that if you have any suggestions for any other sites, please go ahead and let us know. You can email us directly or you can put that information in the question form as well. Thank you, everybody. And I will um, close out by showing you two more slides. The reminder that North Carolina CTE is all about hashtag CTE for North Carolina. When you have activities, school counselors and CDCs, please promote CTE career technical education. Here are our social media sites across the board. We are everywhere, and we'd like to continue to promote what you are doing in the field for students in your districts and with your business partners. Um, finally, <clears throat> the next, well, I, 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 there's two more slides. I didn't tell the truth there. I forgot about this one. Just a reminder that this series is 14 sessions. The next session is October 4th, and then we have October 8th. October um, all relates to the month of family and consumer science for these CTE Lunch and Learn series. We will be sending out reminders to register for that if you, if you don't have that link anymore. And then here are the email addresses for um, Elizabeth and I and Keisha. I was, my apologies, I didn't put yours in there. So I wonder if you could type your email in the chat, Keisha, just in case. I'm so sorry about that. Thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming today. We know that you are busy and working with students and we appreciate that you took this time out to hear a little bit about Career Tech Ed North Carolina and the role of the CDC. Awesome session. Stop recording.